In the midst of the Cold War, two MiG-25s raced to intercept the threat along the Soviet border, they're the fastest interceptors ever built. And if they really pushed their engines, they could reach an incredible speed of Mach 3.2, but it won't be enough, because what they're chasing can outrun and outclimb any threats. SR-71 Blackbird looks like it belongs in a science fiction movie. In fact, this jet black spy plane proved far more successful at outrunning any enemy missiles than any other plane ever. Join us in this video as we explore the capabilities of this plane which was engineered to be invulnerable. The Cold War locked the United States and Soviet Union into a tense struggle for global influence and control. Both sides invested heavily in military technologies, but gaining the upper hand requires anticipating your opponent's next move. The CIA began flying the U-2 spy plane in the 1950s to keep an eye on the Soviet Union's rapidly developing nuclear capabilities. Neither fast nor stealthy, U-2s had one critical advantage. At 70,000 feet, they could fly above Soviet air defenses, or that's what CIA believed. But it turns out that Soviets had tracked the U-2 since day one, and it was only a matter of time before they'd be able to shoot one down. Simply flying high wasn't enough. CIA soon realized that complete impunity over Soviet airspace would need a unique combination of speed, altitude, and stealth. They selected Lockheed Martin to create the next generation of spy planes. Meanwhile in 1960, Russians managed to shoot down an U-2, creating an escalating tension between Moscow and Washington and the aircraft Lockheed created would be unlike any other ever built. A plane that 60 years after its debut, is still the world's fastest air-breathing jet. Blackbird is capable of cruising at Mach 3.3 at an altitude of 85,000 feet, just on the brink of space, and it can do it for hours. Lockheed's engineers had to invent almost everything from scratch to do this. The engines that powered the SR-71 and its predecessors were known as turbo-ramjets. They behaved like typical afterburning jet engines below Mach 2, but more like ramjets above that. The exterior of the SR-71 will reach temperatures of over 900 degrees Fahrenheit when flown at top speed. Easily hot enough to soften aircraft aluminium. To overcome this, Lockheed engineers used titanium for 92% of the aircraft, and in the 1960s this required inventing entirely new fabrication technologies. SR-71 was first deployed over North Korea and Vietnam, where they were unsuccessfully targeted by over 800 surface-to-air missiles. However, the spy plane never ventured into Soviet airspace, at least not officially, because another shoot-down over the Soviet Union would be disastrous. In his biography as a MiG-25 pilot, Soviet defector Viktor Belenko detailed the difficulty of trying to intercept Blackbirds. The MiGs were Mach 3 capable, but only for a few minutes at a time, not for hours like the Blackbird. Nor could they climb as high as SR-71s. Across the next 30 years, Blackbirds flew 3,551 reconnaissance flights over the Middle East, North Africa, Europe, Asia, and Russia. But not a single one was lost to enemy fire. However, the Blackbird had few shortcomings. It was expensive to run, according to one estimate, costing more than $100,000 per flight hour. Each plane was siphoning about $300 million a year out of America's defense budget. To keep these planes mission ready, a fleet of special aerial refuelers and a small army of support and maintenance personnel were required. Advances in spy satellites, aerial drones, and SR-71's inability to deliver surveillance data in real time diminished some of the plane's utility. Finally in 1999 the Blackbirds were retired. So, what do you think about this ultimate alpha in a sky full of alphas? Let us know in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, notify us by hitting the subscribe button. And as always, keep wondering.